Ahoy, ahoy! I'm Gan. Welcome to another video. This time, we're going to be getting right back into my 1850s project, and I'm going to be working on the cage crinoline. I feel like this is one of the most defining aspects of 1850s and 1860s fashion. The first thing that most people think about is the big full skirts and the crinoline or the, the hoop skirt that supported them. So a little background on the cage crinoline. Leading up to it, the fashion was for fuller and fuller skirts. This would be achieved by lots of petticoats stiffened with starch, cording, horsehair, and they just got bigger and bigger until eventually in 1856, the steel cage crinoline was patented. It's so called the cage crinoline because you had horizontally the rows of steel hoops and vertically tapes holding them in place that looked like a cage. Some people saw this as liberating. Now you didn't have to wear pounds and pounds and layers and layers of hot heavy petticoats to get the full shape of your skirts. Other people saw it as ridiculous or even dangerous. Anyways, it caught on really quick. The surviving cage crinolines feature really narrow, lots of little rows of wires. Some of them have a, uh, a bag of fabric encasing the bottom hoops to keep the wearer from stepping through, and they were put on a belt. They were made in a factory, so it's, of course, a great project for an amateur home sewist to take on. But that does present an interesting conundrum that the historical costumer faces trying to recreate one. The hoop steel we have available today, it's wider, flatter bands. The upside is you don't need as many of them and because they're stronger. The downside is uh, they don't look like the originals. What most people making a cage crinoline will do is encase the, the tubes in a fabric casing so they can sew them onto the tapes and go about your way. This is functionally just fine. It looks supporting a dress just fine, but it doesn't look like the original. You can go in the other direction and get super authentic with something like the Wooded Hamlet kit, where they have painstakingly recreated all of the materials based on originals in their collection. The downside is that this is an expensive kit. Rightfully so, I'm not complaining. The other route that some people have taken is try to approach that side, but DIY it a little more using things like piano wire, um, other kinds of tubular wire, and try to build it out that way. I originally was leaning more towards that route, however, That would involve a lot of math, a lot of spatial reasoning, a lot of messing around with stuff to try to get it to look just right. Those are three things that I really dislike doing. And since I am willfully taking some non-historical choices about my construction and my materials, I decided maybe it wasn't truly worth it to get something that looks so close to the original. Also, the thing is, I only do this for fun. And those, those things I mentioned are not my idea of fun. So I will be using the truly Victorian walking cage crinoline pattern. It's a little smaller and shorter. Um, I mean, I'm a smaller and shorter person, so it'll work just fine. Uh, one thing that I'm doing differently from the pattern is that it, it calls for this really like wide waist cincher type belt thing. I 
I appreciate the idea. I don't think it's truly I'm truly necessary. I'm going to do a twill tape belt instead. Twill tape belt instead. I just don't want that extra bulk between my corset and my bodice. Um, however, I do think this would be a really great idea to include if you're making this cage crinoline for a non-historical application where maybe your foundation garment is not as strong as an 1850s corset, like perhaps bridal, other formal wear, princess, cosplay. It would also be a really great way to achieve the look if you perhaps want a dropped waist, but still want a cage crinoline and are kind of doing one of these over how to get that to work. Just do a longer, longer waist cincher, put your hoops on that, and then you'll be good to go for say, um, the, the girl from Princess and the Frog, the pink one, um, or Morrigan from Dragon Age Inquisition, those sorts of things. So while we're on the skirt support chapter, I want to talk about the petticoats a little bit. They would be worn both over and over, over and under the hoop. The one underneath it would be just a slim little slip. It would give a little extra modesty and could be made out of warmer material for a little more warmth in a cold climate. The one over the hoop smoothed it out, gave a little more fullness, could be decorated with ruffles and tucks and lace. They, I, um, I cannot document that they were ever made in a color other than white. I don't like to say never, but I have not seen evidence of it. I already have a under petticoat that will work. I think I have an over petticoat that will work. Uh, it started life as a bed skirt. So once all this is together, I'll try that on over it, see if it works. And if not, I'm going to go to Goodwill and get another bed skirt and make a new petticoat. So let's get sewing. The first step is to sew the bag that will encase the bottom hoops. Basically, it's a giant circle with channels sewn in, and then vertical strips of twill tape get sewn onto that. Next, the bottom hoops are installed into the bag. It's simply a matter of sliding them in, joining the ends, I used gaffer's tape, and sewing shut the opening. Then the remaining hoops get slid into the bone casing and hand sewn onto the tapes. It's pretty straightforward, but was very time consuming. Also, because of the way I joined up the ends of my wires, the casing didn't fit nicely over the join, so I had to patch up the joints with little scraps of twill tape. Many hours later, the final step was just finishing off the waistband, and then this thing is ready to try on. All right, so what do I like about this? The shape, it's like the most perfect cupcake. Uh, the Proportionally though, for someone my size, this is this is kind of pushing it for what's strictly historically accurate, but like, I don't care. Um, things that I dislike about it are just little, little bits where my construction was not as tidy as it should be. Um, and now, the moment of truth when I see if my petticoat is going to work with it. I have already tried the petticoat on on the dress form, but that's not set to my actual height. It gives me a little more room to work around the bottom. Oops, a little squishy there. All right, I think that's even. I need to look in the mirror because I cannot see my feet on the phone. 
I can't see my feet at all. So maybe, maybe it's gonna be long enough. It's definitely full enough. So the next one, I think I'm actually going to be moving on to the dress and finally sewing something that's not underwear. So stick around, I'll see you in that one. Bye now.